ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control, making the split second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. <laughs> God, this is crazy. The North East Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's ours. Welcome to the North East. Saturday morning. We're not too bad on the region's roads across Teesside. The good people in Middlesbrough woke up here, have they? Yeah. Morning, Tom. Good morning, Sam. It's the weekend for the North East Ambulance Service. Do you know what I've lost? I've lost me beard brush. Oh, I haven't. Dispatchers Tom and Sam are just starting the Saturday day shift. Charlie Tango 3, thanks. An emergency call, please. They will be looking after the 30 ambulances covering Teesside today, an area of almost 300 square miles, including the towns of Middlesbrough and Redcar. Redcar 332, good morning. Good morning. On duty today are Redcar 332, Johnny and Sandy. Are you as ready for another busy day? Obviously, Middlesbrough playing at home. I've forgotten about the football being on. Middlesbrough face travel championship playoff contenders Luton Town at the Riverside this afternoon. We love you, Bora. We do. Oh, Bora, we love you. They'll be working alongside Middlesbrough 330, Abid and Paul. Positive vibes. Breathe in and out. And Middlesbrough 328, Pete and Alex. Last time I went there, we'd pick one of the footballers up. What a drama queen. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Just over three hours into the shift, and control has already taken 500 calls. He's jumped out of the flat window and stabbed his ankle. He's unresponsive. He's taken space. Space. Pressure is building across the service as a new call is answered every 13 seconds. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. He's not now. I was watching him out the window and he was cutting his branches and he fell off the roof. Are you there with him now? No, I'm over the fence. Who's with him? Your husband. Does your husband know how to do CPR? Can you do CPR on him? <laughs> Yeah, I'm panicking, yeah. We do have an emergency ambulance coming to him on blue lights and sirens. He's breathing now, he's breathing. He is breathing now. Can you give this phone to your husband? I can't get over. It's a six foot then. So I'm going to have to hide my phone. Yeah, you've got to speak to me. Hello, hello. Stay with him until we get there, OK? I'm with him, I'm with him all the way, dog. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Yes, but he's in the time. He's in the time. Has he fallen in? Yes, after a dog. Is he holding on anything at the side of the water? He's holding, like, the wooden jetty, but he's banged his head. Will someone get his fire and rescue, please? OK, is he definitely breathing? Yes, he's definitely breathing. We've also seen him fall, I think, and on his head. Oh, my friend, just stay with me. Please, man, please. Is that the ambulance? Yes, he's breathing. I'll leave you with the ambulance there, OK? Are you still on the phone, Billy? He's still above the water. He's holding right. on to the side. We've found a light boy and we've got on that in. I don't know if you can hear sirens, but we've got okay. three ambulances currently pulling up. Our team's there as well. Police fire gun, score's gone. And the football still hasn't kicked off. And we're braced for a battle of our own here at the Riverside Stadium. Give it a couple of hours. Let's see what unfolds. 131 Samba, back up, Tom. Any crew. Oh, dear, we've got nobody up there. Staff shortages have left Teesside with four fewer ambulances than expected. 
and high weekend demand is stretching the service. Tom, we're going to move up to level two. Oh, dear. Level two, everybody. When over 50 patients are left waiting across the region, the clinical safety plan level two is triggered. Stopped in 359, go ahead. Category two emergency calls are now facing delays of over an hour. He calls this radio never stops. Please, I'm desperate. My husband's collapsed. How old is your husband? He's 85. He's in agony. Okay. Is he struggling for breath? He can't talk. The call in progress is a category two. Red car 332. Red car 332, Johnny and Sandy are the closest available crew. So we have 85 year old Peter. He's had a fall and now he's got pain in his back. The average response time is 18 minutes, and the patient has already been kept waiting for 23. He's quite short of breath. Hopefully he hasn't done too much damage. There's someone waiting outside the left. Hello there. Oh, dear. <laughs> Peter, my name's Johnny, and this is Sandy. Hi. Hello, Peter. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Joan. Jo Hello, yeah. Joan. Mind that knee, Peter, because I think you've got a cat on it, darling. <laughs> Has he ever had anything like this before? No, he hasn't. No. He, he went out this morning, came back and laid on <sighs> the bed. <sighs> the next thing, he was crying out <sighs> in pain, and he got <sighs> thrown himself to the floor <sighs> off the bed. Yeah. Peter, are you in any pain? <laughs> I'm in agony. I'm going to get some pain relief in you, OK? <sighs> oh. <sighs> Just try and relax it. Oh, I'm just so sorry. You don't I'm need so to apologise. You've got nothing to be sorry for. <laughs> you must be in some oh, horrific pain, Peter. Yeah. I'm just Excellent. putting a bit of uh, morphine into you now. Got the good stuff. Ah, if you want a cup of tea or coffee, just tell me. <laughs> oh, this bless is. you. <laughs> I like the way he volunteers you. <laughs> right, I'm just going to have a look at your knee, OK, Peter? Oh, I don't want your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've done a right good job on it, haven't you? So have you always been around from this way? Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, how did you meet? We met at 15. Wow. So what did you used to do for work? I worked at ICI. Oh, did you? But you've seen some changes over the years since then. I, I retired at 56 and a half. 21 years now retirement. 21 years? What can I ask? I wonder if I get 21 yeah, years no, out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to sit you onto this chair, OK? One, two, three. Got you. We've got you. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you. How does that feel? Feel a lot better. Oh, you are a lovely paper. <laughs> <laughs> I've had nothing to do with you before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just not used to this. Well, that's what we're here for. So, if we could take you to hospital to get your back checked out, OK? Oh, gosh. There you go. All right. So welcome to the office. Oh, I just can't thank you enough. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Thank you, Sandy. So you and Joe have been together since you were 15, did you say? 15, yeah. I got married in Whitby. Oh, lovely. And I managed to get enough money to put a deposit down on a new house. It was £2,225, which was a lot. And you never looked back? We never looked back. Brilliant. So you got to retire at the age of 56, was it? Well, it's like I that, anyway. just think I was so lucky. So well treated, we really were. Yeah. But every year, they used to fix... I don't think they would dare do it now. We used to have nights out. Ten strippers. <laughs> Pie, <laughs> pies, peas and strippers. Does your wife know about that? <laughs> she knew I went. We're not far off now. Oh, I've enjoyed the ride. Like you're cold with short sleeves on. Oh, we're hard as nails, us. It must be. <laughs> it must be. Okie dokie. Red car 332 receiving. Red car 332, yes. Yeah. Just looking for an update of that last deal. I've got your clear status. He was in a lot of pain today. 
So much so he caused further injuries. Brought him in and we think he could do with some extra investigation. So how was things going up in control? You know what? It's kicked off. 11 minutes to kick off here at the Riverside. Middlesbrough up against Luton in the playoff race. It's a massive game, it really is. As far as all we know, it's cocaine last night, cannabis and cocoa and all today. That hasn't been kicked all I just want to see how some boots bad. He's choking on his vomit and he's intoxicated, you said. Yeah, he's drunk on cannabis. So if he does start breathing, can someone go and get the defibrillator? No problem. Got another cat one in Ingleby Barry. Go on. Unconscious nice breathing, 62 year old. Where's one away? Oh, he's gone mobile. Mills for 219, what are they doing? Oh, they leave left scene. I'm too busy, Tom. CCT4. Colby's only on station. Thanks for this out. Sorry, I've got that many crews paging us. Do you want a groupie? Group broadcast, please. Group broadcast. We have C1 response in W Borwick. C1 response in W Borwick. When no ambulances are available, dispatch make a call out to any crew in the vicinity who might be able to clear their job and attend. I mean, the rabbit's off in a minute. There he is. There's nobody any closer. That Middlesbrough three to eight, the half handed over. Everything's sorted out now, crew-wise. Lovely. Good broadcast. C1, now covered. Thank you. Middlesbrough 328, Pete and Alex have just cleared from their last job. You all got there, it's wet. Mm -hmm. Mess your hair up knowing. My hair's thick, it's just going grey. Going. <laughs> well. <laughs> Middlesbrough 328. Middlesbrough 328, thank you. I'll have another call for you, please. Fire away. 324. A 56-year-old female with chest pain. Pete and Alex are two miles from the patient. Obviously. With the match being on, with reports that it is quite busy over that end. Thanks for the uh, information, Alex. Oh, yeah, we're going to hit all the football traffic. There we go. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but their prices have come way before ours. Oh, God, look at this lot. One of you. That would be nice. Yeah. Oh, no, what's he doing? Thank you. Chest pain, 50 yard. You can't mess on with things like chest pain. Right. So, you're getting chest pain? I've had it since yesterday. Sorry, drunk, how's that? When I see Pete, I do as well, don't worry. Just like last night, I thought someone was literally... It felt like a weight on his chest, on the chest. I've been vomiting since Thursday. I can't get anything down. I've now got to agony yet. Oh, what was your name, sorry? Jackie. Jackie, Alex, and that is Pete there. So did the pain come on sudden or was it gradual? It came on sudden. Take a deep breath for me. Now, if I was to push on it... Tender. Tender, I'm yeah. actually pressing on it. But I don't know if that's because I've been vomiting. Yeah, yeah. your blood pressure's up a little bit as well. There's something going on, it's yeah, not as yeah. if it's the first time, is it? Okay. I had a funny do last Friday when I was in the town. Okay. I'd come over all of a sudden all shaky, shivery, and my hands went white. But me being as stubborn as I am, I'm out of health care, James Oh, that explains it all yeah. now. So I think, oh, it'll go away, I'll take power seats, Mum. So that's eight, yeah, eight days ago. Right, OK. All we did, nice and relaxed. Like you're on a deck chair, we're making you a gin and tonic, you're just waiting for us to bring it to you. Right, OK, lovely. ECG's normal sign is... It's not really cardiac, is it? No, there's nothing leaping out. But chest pain, and it's been going on, it's knocking you sick. I think we'd be, we'd have to say, we'll just leave you at home and just see how it goes. Mm. So are you all right with that? Yeah. Um, right. We'll go and get you sorted, right. shall we? Bye-bye, darling. Love you. How was that pain now? You walked? Really? I can feel it. Was it worse when you walked? Yeah. I tried to ring my doctors yesterday to get in. Couldn't get in. 120 odd times later trying to get through. Oh, couldn't, couldn't get in. What are you doing? Auxiliary or? Yeah, auxiliary. I don't know what they call it, healthcare system or something. Yeah, I like auxiliary though. Sounds yeah. better. You're old school. 25 years later. Have you? Yeah. I don't tell how long I've been doing this for. How long have you been? 42. 42? <laughs> oh my God, 42. This is my final swan song before I retire. I am retiring this year. For definite. Professor <laughs> keeps saying this to me. <laughs> the fact I've got retirement pending, that's scary. I feel like it's God's waiting room and I don't want to be in God's waiting room.
it's going to really break my heart when I have to pack it in. I love the people I work with, and I get a bus helping people. Plus, if I stay at home with my husband full time, we end up killing each other. Are we going in the chair? Got one outside. Oh, yeah. Um, have a swift as a swift thing. Yeah. I met Philip in 1983. There was a little tiny gay bar in Stockton, and there was this guy stood in the corner of the dance floor. I couldn't take my eyes off him, and we've been together ever since. And we're very fortunate to live a good life together. Four, four, three, go to bed. So it's 1 0 to Middlesbrough in the first 17 minutes. Oh. We love you, Bora. We do. Oh, Bora, we love you. Eight hours into the shift, the service has answered 1,943 calls, and a new call is coming in every 16 seconds. How many stairs did she fall down? Like all of them. It's all right, it's all right. I know. I'm gonna get you some care, darling, okay? What's the emergency, please? He's in the car and he just crashed. Uh, we don't know if he's out, so he won't talk. Do we know roughly how fast he was travelling? Very fast, because he went in the walls and he spun off the wall. Oh, he's driving, he's driving! He's driven the car away? Like towards the town centre. This car just tired of flat um, bags. Um, and everything. Um, Two sides mad. It's wild. Ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? Just come to do my shopping and the lady just collapsed onto the floor. She's diabetic. It says that the current wait time in the area is between an hour to an hour and a half. Delays for Category 2 emergencies, including heart attacks and strokes, are now five times longer than the 18-minute average. The kind of descendant on mass. To anyone closer who can respond, please pray request speech. Oh. I'm going to have a nervous breakdown here. Right, everybody, we are level three. There's 89 emergencies waiting at the minute and seven urgent. So arrests, we'll only send one vehicle. Actually, we've gone into 90 jobs, so we're nearly at level four, which we haven't been at for ages. What was that? It's we're in the CSP level three. Uh, we've gone into bloody CS level three. Have we? He's struggling to breathe. He's having really bad palpitations. Due to very severe demands on our service at this time, we were unable to send an ambulance. To reduce pressure on the service, the no send rule is now put in place. Would somebody be able to take a trainee? Make your way there as quickly as you can. Some patients will be asked to make their own way to hospital. Only the most critical cases will get an ambulance. Where's he injured? Oh, he's head. <laughs> Blood. Two animals. <laughs> 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 Just calm down. Yeah, and why? Right, you're going to need to take him to A&E now. <laughs> right, you need to listen. This is really important. Yeah. Give the severe demands on the service. Right, I'll probably said that a million times. Get somebody to take him to A&E now. Oscar 17, we have a... 28-year-old female with chest pain. We're picking patient up at East Medical Room at the Riverside Stadium. Thank you, baby. So. When I first started, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night shift, it was virtually no cause. Really? Well, we could watch a whole film without being interrupted. Mm -hmm. Like now, you dread to look away from your screen for a uh -huh. second. It's like a different world. When I first started 21 years ago, we had to dispatch within 45 seconds. That just doesn't happen now. We just cannot meet the demand. I believe funding cuts in the NHS and cuts to all services does have a massive impact. People can't get the help they need. So I think everybody turns to the ambulance service. It's really, really daunting sitting looking at the stack. I hate the fact that my patients have to wait. The referee blows his whistle. Borough beat Luton 
Madison... Red Car 332, Johnny and Sandy have just become available. Red Car 332, just ready for another tasking over. I've got a DTO for you. Outside of Aldi Food Store, April. Who is a diabetic. He had a collapse from the car park and possible COVID. Due to high demand on the service, the patient has been kept waiting outside for almost an hour. I think the bystander's looking after her. You know, is it just the diabetes that's causing this? Has she got COVID? Oh, bless her, she's still sat outside. Oh. Hi, April. Hi, My name's Johnny and this is Sandy. Oh. So, April, can you tell us a bit about what's happened today? I just came out to do a bit of shopping. I felt my blood sugar's dropping and I, I went down. She was on these ever crossing, not moving when Aww. I came. And we all okay to just take you in the ambulance and we'll get you assessed on there where it's a bit warmer. Okay. We might not need to take you to hospital. Here but... we go. There's a sandwich. Oh, thank you. Well, and is that all right? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's really nice. <laughs> these two are like angels, aren't they? You <laughs> we'll that. put that on board. Okay, hey, you. thanks very much for all your help. Thank you. Thank you again. We'll just get your shopping on board. Do you don't want anyone running off with it, do you? <laughs> Shall I just borrow a finger? You'll be used to these, won't you? Mm -hmm. How often do you check your sugars? Four times a day. Do you? So who's at home? German Shepherd. Oh, have you got a German Shepherd? What's the name? Viking. Viking. Oh, oh wow. So that's 5.5, so that's good. So, yeah. Whatever you've eaten so far has done its job bringing it back up. Would you like your drink before it goes cold? Oh, please, yeah. <laughs> So if your blood sugars stay at a decent level, mm, yeah. you know, I don't see any problem with discharging home and we can take you home. Um, it was reported to us that you had a bit of a cough. Uh, have you been having a cough? No, I was having the mouth fire out there. <laughs> stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh. So that's where that, the hook came from. That's where the cough came from. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. I'll go and brave the rain, April. Get you back home. Can you let me know when you're ready, Johnny? Perfect. Thanks, Sandy. All right. If you don't mind me asking, do you suffer with any memory problems? When your blood sugar drops. When your blood, you get a little bit sort yeah. of confused or maybe. But normally you're all right. Take it easy. All right, let's see what your blood sugars are reading now. Right, so sharp little sting. There's your cup of tea there. Oh, thank you. So your blood sugars now have dropped down to three. So what we need to do is get some carbohydrates into you and see if we can naturally build that back up. Okay. Probably that sandwich. Could I get you to unlock that and I'll put... So I certainly wouldn't be happy discharging you at home just yet until we know that your blood sugars are up and holding. He's gorgeous, isn't he? So how long have you had him? Before, yeah. I had a fish from that big time. And somebody came in and saw this. What, so someone entered your house and took it? Oh, they're coming here, they're coming here like home from home. Take anything. I had five budgies and I've only got two left now. Yeah. They've taken food and all sorts out of it, so. About bedding, taking, and all that. Bedding? Yeah. So, uh, so, have you ever seen these individuals? No, they've got a key, just walking. Have you ever reported it? I think I told Kathleen who came round. Nothing's been done about it. Do you mind if I ring social services to find out who Kathleen is? Yeah, fine. There we go. Tuna and sweet corn. Oh, that's okay. Do you think you manage by yourself? Yeah. Right. Looking around your house, would you be offended if I asked social services to maybe see whether they could offer you some help? Think well, that you asked me and I turned them down. Why did you refuse some help? Well, I'm fine. It's silly getting somebody in when there's plenty of people that do need help. What we want to do is keep you independent because you seem very proud and... Not that proud. 
you know, would you be okay if we made a referral? That'd be fine. Lovely. It's reassurance for us as well, knowing you're safe. Well, let's see whether we can get the ball rolling tonight. Red car 332. Red car 332, go ahead. Just to let you know that we brought her to her house. She's got a couple of social issues to address, and we'll be a little while on scene, cos we're just going to make sure that she's safe at home before we discharge on scene. Yeah, that's absolutely all, but do what you need to do and just let her know when you're okay. I think you could be up to Have you guys had many social care jobs today? We have a few elderly jobs where the crews have gotten seen and they haven't had to actually treat and take them into hospital. They've referred to alternative yeah, pathways. Yeah. They're not actually ill, they're just struggling. They've got nowhere else to turn, have they? They might not have family members who can help. But it's like we get annoyed at social services, but it's not them. I think now, in general, all services are pretty much running on empty. But the pressure's getting put on us. Well, exactly. It's, it's, it's all being compounded. I think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. It is. Right. right, Carl. Hopefully you'll have a good night, but Middlesbrough won. Could be going wild. <laughs> I once went home after night shift and there was a lad, nude, sellotaped to a lamppost. Right, I'm going to go. See you tomorrow. Red car 332, Johnny and Sandy have been helping their patient, April, for over three hours. We've rang the emergency number for adult social services. We're um, waiting a long time. <laughs> well, hopefully not too long. Oh, are you go, Johnny? Right. Hi there, it's Johnny speaking. There's a couple of things we're concerned with. <coughs> All right, then. <coughs> I'll get you some dog food. She's been saying things have gone missing out of her house. <coughs> Hang on, mate. I oh, know I'm trying to see if there's any in here. She believes it was Kathleen, and I just wondered whether you... Oh, here we are. I found it. She a... has agreed for us to put a, a social referral in. That's perfect. Well, thank you. Take care now. Bye-bye. So no Kathleen's been involved with us that they know of. Yeah, so I've had a woman in here. Not... Oh, Kathleen. We, we don't see know. what you've got in the house. We... We honestly don't know Jeez, at this point. God. I'm just going to take your blood sugars again. Think you like my blood sugars? Uh, uh, that's it. <laughs> I would just like to stab you, don't I? <laughs> OK, sharp sting. Let's just squeeze a little bit more out. I hope that's enough. And it's actually gone up to 10.9. Oh, that's good, that, isn't it? We're cooking on gas now. <laughs> I think we're finally uh, done tonight. Yeah, all this trouble I've caught just be your tea time. <laughs> It'll be me it's bedtime. I'm yeah. shattered. <laughs> well, you take care of yourself and we'll bid you good night. Yeah, you two take care of yourselves. Oh, oh my word, I'm shattered. <laughs> One thing that I noticed when April thought of people had been coming into a house and, and taking things. It did coincide with when her blood sugars dropped again. Because we have got the privilege of going into people's houses, we see and we're aware of a lot more problems. And it's the satisfaction of knowing you've covered all of it before we leave that patient so we know that they're sorted out. Apple 332, uh, just to confirm before I take you off their job, that there was no further update. We've made an urgent referral to social services. They will be attending this week. So that's why it's taking us so long on scene. Yeah, bless you. You finished at half seven. Hello there. <laughs> yeah, we're slightly tired now. Oh, thank you so much for everything that you've done today. I've got no further job to do. You take care of yourself and have a good night. Ambulance service, dissipation, breathing. He has what looks like a broken nose. We've come out of the cupboard and found him on the floor. By the look of it, someone's assaulted him. With post-match celebrations putting further pressure on resources, the ambulance service received 3,191 calls overnight. Are they making any noises? Nothing at all. Just absolutely no He's cut his head open. We don't know the guy. We've just come in flat. Is he okay? Is he able to talk to me? He seems quite drunk. Good morning. It's supposed to be all right today. No rain. I said it was only two degrees, though. Oh, God.
gosh, it's cold. It's Sunday morning, and the team are back for another 12-hour shift. Morning, Tom. Good morning. Morning. As a new dispatch team takes over from the night shift, 48 patients are still waiting for an ambulance. Red Cross 6.30s, night shift still. you got to see one at 6.26. Oh, you joking. I didn't have anyone else for it. Well, I thought it was a night shift, Tom. I saw the wire. Ambulance services, patient breathing. He's having a seizure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two years, three months. Right. Oh, my God. OK, don't worry. I am going to level. Have you got severe pain in your stomach? It's like every minute and a half, two minutes. In the first 30 minutes of the shift, there are four Category 1 emergencies for the team to coordinate. Red Core 329, go ahead. Hello, James Cook. It's the ambulance service. Can I inform you of a meal we're bringing in, please? Our two children on scene, 42-year-old, code purple. Group broadcast, please. Group broadcast. We have the C1 in Saltburn. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. No, he's passed away. Nice. Are you with him? Yes. OK. What's the address? 121. I've had to send you through a C1 there. It is a 52-year-old female in cardiac arrest. I think that's the third cardiac arrest since we started. It's been absolutely mayhem since we sat down. Totally. I've had that male found murdered. You've had a male found murdered? Yeah. What the hell's happened? Oh, stabbing up in Ellington. At this time of the morning. Oh, fun day Sunday. Across the northeast, 71 ambulance crews are currently treating patients. There are 27 patients waiting for help. She's been kicked in the first by an horse. She can't do nothing. She can't move. There's a man lying on the floor, unconscious on his back. Doesn't even look like he's moving at all. They do have a right. kit there at Tesco Express. Is someone able to go and get it? No, I can't. I'm about to get on a train. Where's the cardiac arrest? It's all dealt with, Vicky. It was about two one four's job. It's category ones and category twos have had two hundred and fifty four since seven o'clock. I hope it doesn't go on all day. No. That was crazy. If we get a category one, the pressure is immense. On average, we need to get to them patients within seven minutes. And if we don't get there, that patient could die. You know, at one time, you would have people on standby to go to these calls. But now, the demand on the service is so high, you don't. It's just frantic. But it's very, very rare that you have a Category 1 waiting for any length of time. You always find somebody somewhere. Because crews never, ever stop. It's just unbelievable. Are you kidding me? And now a major trauma in Skelton. Come off motorbike. Where is it? Right in the middle of anywhere. Who's been assigned to it? Red car 332. It's the 22 year old male. Come off his motorbike. It was prelated through his major trauma. His right leg is injured. He was going about 50 miles an hour. Right, he oh. miles an hour. Um, Ouch. It looked like quite a windy road at all. Could have been flung from the motorbike. Redcar 332, Johnny and Sandy are 11 minutes away from the patient who has come off his motorbike. We've got Hems on today and AC car, so if you do need any other resources, we'll get you backed up. Let's yeah. hope he's got the right gear on. Yeah. If he's come off at 50 miles an hour, he could have done really significant trauma. You know, this weather does bring all the baggers out. Is that in here? Oh, no, he's sat down, isn't he? Yeah, leg down, actually. Hello there. Who's this? Luke. Luke. Hiya, Luke. I'm Johnny. This is Sandy. Tell us a little bit about what's happened. Just yeah. keep your neck nice and still, if you can. I've come round that corner, and I felt a bit of gravel, and my front end's just come out from underneath me. And we could hear the metal of the bike okay. on the road. Yeah, so you can see it's all cracked here. So, Luke, I'm just going to have a little feel of your neck, mate, all right? Any pain here? A little bit there. Any over the actual spine? No. Wonderful, mate. That's exactly what it's I want to hear. It's warm on my bottom of my back. This yeah. whole side is, is not good. I'm just going to have a feel of your pelvis. Uh, 
Where's it hurting? Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Red car 332. Red car 332, go ahead. I think we can deal with this ourselves at this present time, but we could just put a request into the police. There's no one on scene here. Roger, no, but I'll hurry the police up for you. Luke, I'm just going to trim your trousers. We'll Do convert them into shorts for you, free of charge. How many layers have you got on, Luke? It's cold when you're hiking a bike. <laughs> I like your pepper pig bottoms. Oh, <laughs> Come on, not... Daddy. Yeah, yeah, my daughter got me them. <laughs> she might have to get you another pair now, I'm afraid. <laughs> OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you scooped and we're going to put a, a pelvic binder on you, just as a precaution. Hi there, officer. I'm more bothered about the pelvis area and the yeah. lower back. We're just starting to package him up. OK. Right. Ready, brace, lift. All right, going up in the world. And what we'll do is we'll just draw up some morphine. Hopefully that'll take the edge off this pain. What, the pain relief? Is it working already, is it? Brilliant. Have you started warming up a bit? Yeah. Good. Pain score all right? Jump in. So, what do you like about the motorcycling? Free. Freedom, eh? You were saying you had kids. How did you feel when you first? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was 17. 17. Oh, I must admit, at that age, I was very immature. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my first born, she slid right out. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and it is hard work. You'll have to be working the overtime. Right, your carriage has arrived. The patient is admitted to James Cook Hospital for further assessment. I keep saying Sunday is a day of rest. It's meant to be. Not an hour or so. Middlesbrough 328, Pete and Alex are halfway through their shift. I have all my chores on a Sunday. Phil makes me scrub the bathroom. I have to wash the kitchen floor. I actually like coming to work on a Sunday because I get away from all my chores. I hate working weekends. Um, yeah, because it's the only time we get to spend together, the three of us. Oh, yeah. We usually go for a Sunday lunch. Danielle sent us a picture of our Sunday dinner, Liz. Yes, sir. Very happy oh. with that, she says. She's roasted a chicken and everything. Yeah. And she likes peas with hers. What sort of peas are they? Not normal she likes marrow fat peas. Oh, with I love Sunday marrow fat peas. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, you and Danielle are literally the same person. <laughs> Ambulance service is the patient breathing. It fell on the floor and her whole knee split open and you can see down to the bone. Where is the rugby club? Right. We have a uh, underfit pain with a uh, dislocated shoulder. Right. The okay. pain is so severe we were unable to move her. She's in absolute agony. She can't stand up. Can't you speak in a full sentence? No. She's 93. It's my neighbour. Middlesbrough 328 receiving. Middlesbrough 328, thank you. I have details of an emergency call in Stockton. Yeah, send it through. Right, you're going to a C2 response. You're going for a female, 93 year old, short of breath. Back pain and chest pain. Pete and Alex are four minutes away from the patient. Chest pain, back pain, short of breath. Chest infection. MI. Anxiety. It's about 300 metres. Okay. Well, those people are. Yeah. Don't even have a name for this lady yet, do we? <coughs> Hello. Recording What's her name, sorry? It's Jean. Hello, Jean. 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 Yeah. Hello, Jean. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> My name's Alex and this is Peter. Well, Can you point to where the pain well, is, well. sweetheart? Into your back as well? Yeah. How long's this been going on for? A few days. A few days. You can call us at any point, you know. We don't mind. We work 24-7. Yeah? The pain's the worst. The pain's the worst. On a score of 1 to 10. 10 being childbirth. She's never had children. Oh, bless you. How old is she? 90 what? 93. 93. I hope I look like you at 93. Oh. This is why, because she's never been married and never been children. Yeah. Right. I'll so just yeah, have I'll go listen. down, Jane, for me, darling. Is this tremor normal for her? It is. What do you suffer from, Jane? Well, I have arthritis. Just let your arm go straight. You've got to 90s and you just suffer with arthritis? Wow, you're amazing. I must confess. Go on. 
a guest. So it's yeah. Tonight I'm the guest. How many do you smoke? Five. Good yeah. girl. And the rest, Jesus. And the rest. How many is she? Forty-five. Forty-five. Are you She's saying forty-five. No, oh. less than ten. Hey, these ladies are telling us are absolute porkies. Looks pretty good. Jean, you're going to live forever. She is. So this isn't like Jean. No, no. she wouldn't tell us. Yeah. She felt poorly, unless she was really poorly. Okay. But I know she's really worried about going to hospital as well. Don't be really worried. I think the fact that you're in so much pain and difficulty breathing, I think we already know which avenue we're going to have to go down. Yep. So what we need to do is get you to hospital and take some blood. We can't do it here. Could we get a little bag together for you, just in case? She likes to read. Um, Jane, you oh, read take a, a the take Alex? a book for her. Yeah, definitely. Right. You're going to go in a care home. Jane, do that. <laughs> that is not my job. I'm keeping my dad out of a care home. I'll try and keep you out of a care home. Jane. All we want you to do is to get this breathing and this pain sorted. My yeah. job is not to put you in a care home, Jane, and I'm telling you the you've truth. You've got better capacity than I have. You can make your yeah. own decision. Jane, you're I thought, I thought this is why you've not rang yeah. us. No, this isn't what we want to do. No, we want to get, we want to get you right so you can come home and keep these ladies in check. I love it. I can tell. I love yeah. people. Yeah. She's only got change I want in to it. Here. What you want to I die. Love yeah. want to die. I know, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Got a strong job, Jane. There we go. Straight onto that chair, there we go. There you go, Jane, he's here. I know, but I want to go with you. No. It's not because it's because of no, COVID, it's... I promise you. We'll tell you which ward she's going to. Yeah. Honestly, we don't want anything to happen to her. She's absolutely gorgeous. It's like the Queen there, look at it. Well, jump and give her a quick kiss before she goes. Oh, oh bless you. There you go. Yeah. No, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll tell you what, yeah, let me make the phone call. Are you a family member, sir? No, I'm just a neighbour. All oh, right. I've been helping you, having a dream. So we all need good neighbours. I've been shopping, having a I'll save you chicken dinner for later. Sunday? You're missing Sunday dinner today? Yeah. yeah. You better you say my one, she might be home later. Hi, Bed Bureau. It's Alex Paramedic for the Ambulance Service. I was hoping to get on top of EAU, a 93-year-old lady. OK. Uh, one of her neighbours is wanting to come with her. Is that possible at this time or not? Yeah, that would be perfect. I think he would appreciate that, and maybe she would as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, cheers, bye. You can come. He's coming! You're doing very well. You're doing very, very well. I wish you'd have told me you were giving me. Oh, I'm not scared tonight. You're not scared? No. I wouldn't know. I think you've got a bit more left to give yet. I hope so. It's your birthday on Saturday, so you better act. I'll oh, take a straight in. Perfect. Yeah, you've got special treatment here, Jane. She said, I don't mind if I go today. I said to her, I said, I think you've got a, a bit more story to tell you. You know, they all seem keen on helping her, don't they? She seemed like the linchpin of the community. They it's were like all. A, it's almost like rallying. an adopted family, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think it happens enough, but. It's an important thing, isn't it, having that community? At some point in our life where we're going to need help, it might be a small thing, it could be a big thing, be it family or neighbours or society in general, we all need that support to be there. When I came out as a gay man in the early 80s, a lot of gay people didn't get the support they needed. Phil and I got a lot of abuse, physical as well as verbal abuse. People used to say that gay bashing was like a sport. It's a whole different world we're living in now. Communities change for the better. We care a lot more for each other than we used to now. Well, since it's a high priority ambulance, we are very busy at present. There is to be a demand on the service at this time. Nine hours into the shift, Control has answered 2,324 calls. There is now a five-hour wait for Category 3 patients. I'm going to have this as a patient breathing. Yeah. A little boy about 12 years old, going to be pushing into the river Tees, trying to fix him out. His mouth went into his mouth. 
So he swallowed some water. Swallowed some water, yeah. Yeah, very, very cold. Oh, you've pushed into the teas. Who's been pushed in the river? 12-year-old male. I mean, every crew's out on a job, like. Oh, you're Middlesbrough, mate. Get it. It's what, they're not. They're too far away. You've literally got no one. <sighs> There's no way of getting across teas without going all the way around, is there? The crew's in Grangetown. A Category 2 emergency has an average of an 18-minute response. But due to pressures on the service, the patient has already waited almost half an hour. Paul and Abid are the nearest available crew. They are 15 minutes away. Elizabeth 330. Thank you. I am aware that you're going to have to go a bit further away to get over the other side. For a tease barrage, we've got a report of a 12 year old there who has been pushed into the water. Oh, are we the closest? <laughs> It's quite a fast river, like people do water sports and stuff on it. He's out of the water, but you can still get what's called secondary drowning, which is if they've inhaled any water, they can become unwell later on. Oh, yes. Hello, mate. Are you dad? Yeah, yeah. Hello, boy. What's your name? Lucas. I'm Abby. This is Paul. Let's get Have a jump on. on here, mate. Let's get you warmed up. You jump on, Dad. Oh. Some nasty girl pushed him in for the Snapchat. So, what happened, Lucas? So, I was just sat on the step. Uh, I was just sat on the step with my mate. Some girl just ran over and just shoved me into the water from behind. Right. I went, like, fully under and then couldn't get myself back up. I got grabbed out. Absolutely. Oh, especially the there. Yeah. Who was it that pulled you out then, Lucas? Just another girl, wasn't it? Another, another kid? Yeah, another kid. Going up, going out no more now for a while. Let's get the life out of me. I'm oh, 36. Six. At least your temperature's not like in your boots. I'm going to make you into a turkey. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Do you think you swallowed any of the water, Lucas? Uh, yeah, a bit of it. Like when I was coming out of the water, I was like coughing the water out. Like, right. I could feel like some of it's at like, the back of my throat. So normally. Anyone that's kind of gone into water and gone underneath, yeah. we normally kind of recommend a trip down to any just for them to keep a little eye on him for a bit, make sure he doesn't develop any like breathing problems or out like that. Yeah. Is that getting you a bit warmer? <laughs> Alright, I'm just doing the front, Paul. Yeah, no worries, mate. Oh, lucky. Very, very lucky. Well, like, I can't swim at all. She didn't know that you couldn't swim, did she? It's just lucky your mates reacted quickly. Especially with the tees, you don't know what's in there. It'd be oh. three-headed fish and all sorts. Yeah. Happy you go, Paul. Champion. Not far from North Tees either. It's only down the road from this side. This is the first time I've ever been in an ambulance. It is, yeah. Yeah, it'll be a last as well, about it. It's about my thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Like the borough, eh? <laughs> Sam. Yeah? You know that lad who got pushed into the river? Oh, right, yeah. It was a totally random person who pushed him in. Stop it. Just, just pushed him in and took was mm. taken for them of my camera. Shut up, lad. The poor lad can't even swim. And luckily, he had friends with him who jumped in and pulled him out. Oh, thank God he's got friends. Could have been a nasty end, that. Just like that. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. The choking and some the, food. The choking now? Yeah. I think it's stuck. Group broadcast, please. Group broadcast. We have a C1 in Stockton. If there's any crew could clear at North Tees. Oh, really? Middlesbrough 328 just responding to that cat one over. 328, that is appreciated. Thank you. A C1 for a 75-year-old female who's reportedly choking. Middlesbrough 328 are four minutes away from the patient. Because choking can be fatal, a rapid response vehicle is also dispatched. We do a bit of Heimlich manoeuvre. Are you able to cough noisily? Yeah, you're just coughing now. <laughs> but it's still stuck in there. It's still stuck in there, yeah. 
if they're fully choking, it's just brutal. Can you see the object in the mouth? Have a look in your mouth, see if you see the other yeah. So I can't see anything in the mouth. I'm thinking we should probably take the para bag in. If there's anything there, we can probably get yeah, it with the gills. gills. Yeah. It's about 150 metres down. There we go. This one, uh... Yeah. Come in a minute. That's a good sound. I can hear somebody trying to cough. Yeah. Hello. I'm really sorry. I think it's gone. Were you just having your Sunday lunch? <coughs> yeah. Yes. It's Hence always the, the Sunday lunch. It's always it's the meat on the meat. Sunday lunch. I mean, it was Marks and Spencer's thing. Oh, wow. Marks and Spencer's. What's your name, sorry? <laughs> Maureen. Maureen, I'm Alex. <laughs> this is Peter. Get a breath. Get a breath. Oh. I've done what they call it. The hamlet, have you done that one? Yeah, we had a pub and have two or three people there to do what? Middlesbrough 3 2 8. <coughs> the blockage appears to be uh, dislodged. Uh, no uh, backup <coughs> needed at this detail, over. That is great. Thank you for the update. Can we do a full set of checks on you while we're here? Is that yes, all right? Yes. I have heart problems. What are your heart problems? I had a heart attack. And then I had pulmonary embolism. Oh, yeah. nice. So you've had a cat with nine lives, mate. There we go. We've got a few more left. We're all right. Good. Your saturation levels are brilliant. All right. I'm saturated with what? Oh, oxygen, oxygen in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't casting a spoon. <coughs> Absolutely not. Have you got a list of medication? I've been on the, the warfarin about five years. Yep. And the cloppy dog run. When you've done the abdominal thrusts, mm. have you pushed really hard yeah, onto the diaphragm there? Yeah. 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 Well, I must have done it, but I was about six. And they were really forceful, oh, and oh, she was, oh, like, oh, literally oh, almost off really the floor. Up, but... Yeah. I know you're not going to like me for saying this, but if somebody's had six really hard abdominal thrusts, we would recommend that you went to hospital, only in case he's <coughs> damaged something <laughs> in your throat. What, like an E&E or something? Yeah. Wait for hours. I can't, I well, can't make yeah. you, but oh, I'm all right. no, I'm not going, thanks. So, can I read something to you? Yeah. Abdominal thrusts can potentially cause serious internal injuries and all patients successfully treated with these measures should be fully examined afterwards for injury. Patients receiving antiplatelet or anticoagulant drugs, which you are you both, are. are at increased risk of intra-abdominal hemorrhage and should be transported to hospital for further assessment. OK. Good lass. Um, Give your finger a set. Scratch mm -hmm. coming up, all right. All right, yes. Yeah. Uh, put a bit of tissue on there quick before you bleed all over the shop. Please, will you get me a plaster, please? Uh. You're all right, bleeding, yeah. <laughs> Oh, She's yeah. on blood thinners and then eat platelets. Oh, yeah. She'll bleed like a stuck pig. Have oh, yeah. we stopped? Yeah. No, no, it's still going. Coming. We need to put some fluids in shortly. Oh, yes, I think my glass of wine. <laughs> I've finished it. I'm yeah. not looking cos I can't tell you not to. You're an adult. Glass not of there. Not even looking. <laughs> Anybody want to call drink? Right. Yeah, I'll have a mojito, please. Adam's the cocktail person. We'll finish at half seven. We'll be back then, all right. You'd be on your back with Adam's cocktails. <laughs> oh, goodness. Where was this? Go on, Maureen. And uh, try not to eat your dinner while she's out. Oh, don't you want this jacket? No, you've got it. I've spent a lot of money for it. What did you used to do, like? We had a pub. We had for 20-odd years. My partner had... It was the Mulberry. Oh, yeah, my brother goes in there. What did they call her? A Philip. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. My two sons are... Gay. We've adopted sons. They just live down the bottom. Adam used to work for us. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah. People's attitudes have changed. We've come a long way with acceptance and tolerance. Phil and I never thought in our lifetime we'd ever see a civil partnership. But we're amongst the first to have one. Things might be harder in some ways. There's been a lot of positive changes in society, and I think it's something to be proud of. Right like there, lovely. Got your warm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be trouble. I could do with a wine. A nice glass of wine. Oh. Do you think you'll have a vodka? Probably. Red car 332, yeah, thank you very much. Good to see you. Good night, and thank you for seeing you. Had a lovely few days off. You too. I think we all need them after this weekend. Maybe I treat you quite as good as I should. Oh, oh no. No way, surely. Middlesbrough 328, thank you. It's finally that time, end of day. Uh, but it's flew by, I'll say that much. I can't believe it's home time. 
job well done, Tom. Mm -hmm. It's all about the dispatching, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> See you all later. Bye-bye. I worry about the future. What are we going to do in 10 years' time? What's the demand going to be like? But I still love going to work. And no matter what pressures we're under, we can't turn somebody away who's looking for help. That's what the ambulance service is there for. And I'm still proud to work for the North East Ambulance Service. Have you set your final retirement date, then? No, no, yeah. I think the NHS now, it's not the same NHS that we used to have. People's expectations now of the health service are far greater than what they used to be. There's an awful lot of pressure goes on the paramedics and technicians and control crews, but I still wish I could go back 30 years and start again now, to be honest. Step back, step back. Yeah, keep coming. Abby, you are the worst banksman ever. The job's been a major part of my life for almost 43 years, and I'm going to miss it so, so much. Come on, time to go home. The fact you're doing something for other people, the fact that you help, that is priceless. You can find details of organisations offering information and support available online from the BBC Action Line website.